Next, we're going to look at the proof of the product rule. Okay. Now, we don't do a lot of the proofs in this course, but the product rule, I think, is, is it's an important rule, and, and the proof is sufficiently kind of enlightening that it's worth going through to sort of see why the product rule works the way it does. So we're going we're gonna to look at the details. And of course, the first step, if we don't know anything else, is to look at the definition. So the definition of the derivative says that the derivative of f times g at x is going to be the limit as h goes to 0 of f times g at x plus h minus f times g at x all over h. So the first thing we do is we use the definition of the product of two functions, right? So function multiplication is defined point-wise. So f times g at x plus h is simply f at x plus h times g at x plus h. And this is just f of x times g of x all over h. OK. And now you try to proceed from here, right? And it's not clear what's going to happen here, right? Um, what do you do? The, the sum rule and the constant rule, they, they had relatively simple proofs. But of course, they were relatively simple results, right? The other ones, we just did a little bit of rearranging, factoring in the difference quotient. We got our answer. Here, there's no obvious factoring or rearranging that, that we can do. But we kind of, you know, we know where we want to end up, right? We want to end up with f prime times g plus f times g prime. We know that this is the right formula for the product rule, right? And, and like most results in mathematics, um, people discover the result before they figure out the proof, right? Um, you, you figure out the result by doing lots of examples, working through problems, recognizing the patterns, and saying, OK, it looks like you know, every time I take the derivative of a product, it seems to be following this same pattern. Um, so you write it down as a rule. And you want to be 100% certain that that rule is going to apply every time. And so that's why you bother with the proof. You go through the details of the proof. Now, Knowing that that's where you want to get, you start looking for some tricks. And you say, OK, well, let's see. To get f prime, I need an f of x plus h minus an f of x, right? And, and I want to be multiplying by, by g, let's see. So what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to do a little bit of a trick. Seems like a trick at first, OK? So we're going to go f of x plus h times g of x plus h. And then we say, OK, I would like to be able to sort of, let's say, factor out f prime somehow. So I want f of x plus h minus f of x. So I say, OK, well, I want minus f of x. But I need to be able to get rid of this g of x plus h. So let's keep that as a common factor. And then we'll be able to take it out. Okay? But of course, you can't just add a term. If you do that, you, you change things, right? And so if you add something, or in this case, subtract something, you should put it back. Okay? So we add this, so we subtract this term, then we add it back again, so we haven't changed anything. And then we have our f of x, g of x at the end.
and this whole thing is divided by h, right? And you might be looking at that and thinking, you know, I could, I could never in a million years come up with that. Uh, and it's not, it's not the point, right? Um, with practice, you can come up with these things. The first time you look at mathematical proofs, probably you can't come up with it. But um, keep in mind that, that, you know, calculus is very old, right? Hundreds of years old. People had lots of time to figure these things out, right? Um, the first person to come up with this has been dead for a long time, right? Um, so we, we, we owe our debts to a lot of people. Uh, but now we look at this and we identify some common elements. If we look at these first two terms, we say, okay, there's this g of x plus h, which is common to both, and I can factor that out. In these ones, there's an f of x, which is common to both. And if I factor that out, notice what's left over, g of x plus h minus g of x. That's what we need to get g prime. So we're in business, okay? We get the limit, h going to zero, f of x plus h minus f of x times g of x plus h. And of course, we can divide term by term by h. I'm going to put it here for obvious reasons. Okay. And now we have f of x, and what's f of x multiplying? f of x is multiplying g of x plus h minus g of x. And I have to divide by h in the second term, and of course, I want to do that there. Aha. Okay. Now you can probably see where things are going, right? You can start to see the answer. Uh, last thing now is limit properties. Limit of a sum is sum of the limits. And remember that this limit is with respect to h, okay? So we look and we see where, where are the things that depend on h? Uh, this depends on h, this depends on h, this does not, this depends on h. So we break things up. We say, okay, so we have the limit h going to 0, f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And of course, the limit of a product is product of the limits times limit h going to 0, g of x plus h plus now, f of x I can just bring out, right? It's a constant as far as the limit with respect to h is concerned. And so I get to here. All right. Very good. So now we look at this and we say, ah, I know what this is. This, by definition, is f prime of x. This, by definition, is g prime of x. What about this? Well, looks like you should be able to just put h equal to 0, and then you get g of x, which of course is what you want. Um, and it is. But this isn't immediately obvious. There is a condition that needs to apply here. Um, in order to be able to do direct substitution, you have to know something about your function you have to know that your function is continuous at that point. So why do we know that g is continuous? Well, we assume that it was differentiable in the statement of the theorem, right? f prime and g prime, they exist. We also showed that any function which is differentiable is automatically continuous. Um, and so this is g of x, and the reason is that g is continuous. Right? If we didn't know g is continuous, we wouldn't necessarily be able to make that leap. But because we know it, we're good to go, and we get our result. f prime of x times g of x plus f of x times g prime. And there's our product rule.